Okay, this is the uh, Math 1111 Zoom meeting for 9 p.m. Uh, October 26. And so this week, uh, we're just doing one section 37 that'll finish up chapter three. Practice problems on that section are three to 35 odd. No quiz this week because we are having test three on Friday. We'll give it out Friday, do Sunday, same format, but it's going to cover all of chapter three. We did every section, three, one through three, seven. Same format as test one, one submission, your true or false answers on the Google form. And I'll collect your answers uh, off, off that Google form. For web assign, we'll go back to that this week. Uh, again, off your personal study plan, practice quiz, just problems one and five. And you can email me the percent of these two problems you get correct. Uh, we have a participant tonight. Uh, do you have any specific problems or anything you'd like to see? Um, no, thank you. I'm just was going to ask my questions and that was it. OK. Um, yeah, so I mean, if that if that's all you wanted to, to ask, uh, you know, feel free. You don't have to hang around if you want to watch the recording later. Do you want to okay, see uh, yeah, an introduction to uh, 3.7 or? Um, yeah, sure. I'll watch that. Okay. 3.7 is really a repeat, repeat of chapter one. I think it was 1.7. We did some of these. I can flip back to that. I think it was one point solving inequalities. Yes. It was uh, 1.7. They're, they're going to give you some more complicated ones from one. This is from 1.7. We uh, solve some inequalities here. Um, we only did half of 1.7. I'll just point this out in the homework. We did a lot of these, you know, kind of quite, well, let's see it. Quadratic inequalities here, and they're going to repeat some of this, except they're going to be a lot longer. And I let you out of the fraction inequalities because I knew we were doing them in 3.7. So we're going to bring these kind of inequalities in as well in 3.7. I don't think you'll find them as hard. Um, as you would have a chapter one. Hopefully you'll be more used to this. But the first stuff is just largely a repeat of chapter one, if you remember chapter one. Let me um, just start off, I guess with the first problem, number three. They'll want you to solve x minus 3, x plus 5, and 2x plus 5 less than 0. I'll write that down. So off page 352. First one's number 3. Solve x minus 3, x plus 5, 2x plus 5 less than 0. OK. Remember. If this is a straight equals, we had x minus 3, x plus 5, 2x plus 5, straight equals 0. Hope you remember you know what to do. You set each piece to 0. That means you're going to wind up switching signs. You're going to have x equal 3, x equal negative 5. And I don't know if you remember what happens with the two, but you'd have two X plus five equals zero. Two X would equal negative five. Divide both sides by two and your X is negative five halves. And you're done. All right, but when you make it an inequality or an inequality, you must test intervals. You must test your intervals. 
So when I'm, I'll rewrite it, x minus three, x plus five, two x plus five less than zero, you still do this same thing. You still get your x equals three, your x equals negative five, and your x is negative five halves. But they divide the number line. Those are, in fact, you can tell. See, those make those exactly equal zero, and they're not answers. See, if I put in three, three minus three is zero. Zero is not less than zero. So they divide answers. So I got to put these along the number line. I hope you remember this from chapter one. In order, negative five would be first. Got to have an open circle because there's no equal to. Negative two and a half would come next. Negative five halves would come the open circle. And the three would come last. Let's be on the right side. Again, open circle. The answers are whichever of these intervals come up less than zero, negative. And there's just no other way to test them other than pick numbers in between plug them in and see which gives you negatives. I'm looking with less than zero, I'm looking for negatives. Looking for negative intervals. Before I charge in, maybe I'm going too fast. Should we pause for station identification? Did this go too fast? Oh, no, you're good. Okay. So yeah, there's just no other way to do it, but just uh, pick a number, you know, in each one, plug into this. Each piece will come up positive or negative. And then I'm gonna have to imagine what happens when you multiply all three of them. And do I get a negative when I do that? If I do, I shade it. If I don't, I'll cross it. And eventually I'll write down my final answers in interval notation right off this graph. So I guess we'll start with negative six. That's gonna give me negative six minus three, negative six add, add five, and two times negative six add five. Does that come up less than zero? Well, you can see a negative piece there, a negative piece there, negative 12 add five, that's a negative piece. Isn't three negatives negative? This is in. The left side of negative five is in. Did that go too fast? No, you're good. Okay. Well, between negative five, this is negative 2.5, if you want to make it a little more understandable. Two and a half, negative two and a half. Uh, I don't know, negative four maybe. So I'll have negative four minus three, negative four add five and two times negative four add five, less than zero. Negative piece there, negative seven, negative four add five, that turns positive. Negative eight add five, that turns negative, less than zero. See, now I have just two negatives. With this positive, that makes positive. I got an even number of negatives, that's positive. Positives are not less than zero. So this one's out. So I got two out of the four tested. One's in, one's out. Are we ready to do the last two? Yes. Okay. Well, if I take, say, zero between negative two and a half and three, if zero's in an interval, it's always an easy test. So I'll have uh, zero minus three, zero add five, and uh, two times zero add five, less than zero. First piece negative, but zero plus five is positive. Zero again plus five positive. Well, that's one negative times two positives. That's an odd number of negatives. Less than zero, yes. That's in. I wish I could tell you, you know, from doing three of them, it'll instantly tell you what this is, but you know, I just really can't. There are no absolute rules. You might guess, well, yeah, this is probably out, but I'm sure I could come up with some formula wouldn't actually be in. So you, there's just no alternative but to test it. 
So four minus three, four add five, two times zero, I'm sorry, two times four add five, less than zero. Well, that's positive one, positive nine, and eight, five, positive 13, less than zero. No. Nope, it's out. So can you write down your answer in interval notation? It would go from negative infinity to negative five with a parentheses there for the open circle. And the other one would start up at negative five halves, again, parentheses, and run to three with parentheses. Did that go too fast? No, you didn't. Now, you see how long this got? And they were actually trying to be kind to you. They gave you the factored form. I'll show you what they're going to do to you. You get into the next column after problem six. And they're going to basically make you collect your, like seven, you got to collect all the terms over and you're going to have to factor it to find out what your dividing numbers are. And all the rest of these, you're going to have to bring them over and factor. And then the next type of problems are all these fractions and uh, maybe 17 isn't too bad, but further down, they become more like projects than problems. It's gonna be a tough enough section, you know, by itself. Do you wanna see one that uh, factors? Um, no, I'm good. I'll, I'll watch the rest. Um... Later, I have to work on an assignment, but thank you so much for showing me this. Well, absolutely. No problem at all. And I appreciate you coming out tonight and I'll, I'll send you what you wanted. All right. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank, thank you for coming out. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. All right. Let's try one like number seven. Where you're going to have to factor it. Three fifty two, number seven. X cubed add four X squared greater than or equal to four X add sixteen. I want you to solve. Well, there's going to be more, some more steps in the setup of this. You're going to want to go X cubed add four X squared minus four X minus sixteen greater than or equal to zero. Let's try a grouping and hopefully it works. If the grouping doesn't work, then you got to play factors of 16 over factors of one, and you can still do that. Uh, plug them in the calculator if you see which one are actual zeros, probably have to do a long division and wind up with a quadratic formula maybe. Uh, they, there probably are some that work, that make you do that whole bang, whole schmo bang. But let's see if a grouping will work here. Take an x squared and you'd be left with x plus four. Let's see if an x plus four will work here. Okay, so the group is supposed to be common if a grouping will work and that will give you a minus four x and sure enough, a minus 16. All right, so they cooked this one to work by grouping. Pull out the group, you're left with x squared minus four I left off the greater than or equal to zero, greater than or equal to zero. And I hope you recognize the factoring for that. X plus four, X plus two, X minus two, greater than or equal to zero. So this gives, uh, we'll call them boundaries or limits. A negative four, a negative two, and two. Those on the number line, negative in order, negative four, negative two, and two. Notice the R equal, closed circles. And just like last problem, this means we're gonna get brackets at whichever side of these numbers work. 
All right, I say a negative five. So I have a negative five add four, a negative five add two, a negative five minus two, greater than or equal to zero. Negative, negative, negative. Three negatives is negative, greater than or equal to zero, no. This one may be the opposite of number three because it turned greater than, I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, between negative four and negative two, you got negative three. You got a negative three add four, a negative three add two, minus two, greater than or equal to zero. Positive, negative, negative, greater than or equal to zero. Yep, two negatives is a positive times positive is a positive. Yes, this works. So far, I think it's working out to be the exact kind of inverse situation in number three. All right, we'll do a zero between these. X equals zero. We have a zero add four, two, and a zero minus two, greater than or equal to zero. Positive, positive, but a negative, greater than or equal to zero, no. All right, then let's try a three. Three add four, three add two, three minus two, greater than or equal to zero. Positive, 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 greater than or equal to zero, yes. All right, answer then, You're gonna be in brackets because you got closed circles. You can use negative four to negative two and you can use them both. Any number between them, including negative four and negative two. The negative four and negative two make them zero and that's works because you're greater than or equal to zero. Zero is greater than or equal to zero. And then from bracket to comma infinity. Let's uh, do a Mr. C idiot test. 3.7, this was number seven. We'll uh, check it out. 3.7, number seven. Let's see if I can put both of them on the screen. And if I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot here. Let's see. No, nope, looks, I think we got it. Negative four, negative two, it's in brackets. And between two and infinity, two with a bracket and then infinity, of course, in parentheses. Okay. That kind of hits that section. Let's talk about some fractions for the rest of the session. I guess we'll do a try a simple one like 17. This is going to get technical. X minus one over X minus 10 less than zero. There's gonna be some similarities to this, but also some technical differences. X minus one over X minus 10 less than zero. Once again, off page 352. Okay. You will want to set, well, you, you want to get a zero on one side and further down the page, you'll have to do some algebra to make that happen. This one already has it. And you will want to find zeros of your top and bottom. They will be boundaries. So in other words, say the top equals zero. That means X minus one equals zero, which means X equals one. 
Secondly, your bottom equals zero, minus 10 equals zero, and your x would equal 10. And those are the numbers you're going to want to put on the number line and test in between. This is where things get very technical. You're going to want to keep track of whether your number here came from the top or the bottom. Top was one. You're going to, on this one, want open circle. Open circle, no or equal to. You pay attention on the top to whether you got an or equal to. See, if I stick in one for this, one minus one is zero. I have one minus one over one minus 10, less than zero, which means I have zero over negative nine, less than zero. This is not good. There's no or equal to. On the bottom, always, open circle, always, because on the bottom, if you have 10 minus one over 10 minus 10, you're always dividing by zero, always dividing by zero. So if the number comes from a zero on the bottom, it's always open circle. But the top depends on whether there's an or equal to or not. If there'd been an or equal to, I'd made that closed. Got to keep track of this. It's very technical. That's why I didn't really show it in chapter one. I thought it was too much. All right, now you just test between them, but you test in this fraction. And see which intervals will come up negative. All right, so I guess we'll start with zero. Is zero minus one over zero minus 10 less than zero? Well, you'd have negative one over negative 10, less than zero? No, because this is positive. Negative divided by negative is a positive. You want negatives less than zero. That's not in. All right, between one and 10, maybe a two. Is two minus one over two minus 10 less than zero? You'd have one over negative eight, less than zero. Yes, you're in. Hope this isn't going too fast. Try 11 and you'd have 11 minus one over 11 minus 10, less than zero. And you'd have 10 over one, less than zero, no. Got a positive here, not less than zero, so this is out. Answer, any number between one and 10, again with parentheses, you can't use one or 10. Use one and you're equal zero, not less than zero. Use 10 and you're dividing by zero, which is illegal. Uh, since this is the first one, I'll see if I can find the answer. I'll show you. Run a Mr. C idiot test again. Three, seven, this was 17. I'm getting both on the same page. I got one to 10 in parentheses, 17. Yep, one to 10 in parentheses. Okay. Let's try one with a little more algebra. We're at almost 30 minutes. Let's try one with a little more algebra in it. About one like, I don't know if y'all can see those messages that pop up or not. Oh, why is torturing me? Three, seven. about one, yeah, like 27, page 352. X minus three, 
over 2x plus 5 greater than or equal to 1. We're going to want to get a 0 on one side. That's pretty easy. Minus 1, minus 1. Minus 3 over 2x plus 5 minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. This is going to allow you to use your sign charts and whether things are positive or negative. If you do it around one, you can't tell. You Theoretically possible to do it around one, but you don't really know what your boundaries are. If you do it around zero, you can get your boundaries. You don't want to get a common denominator. Well, that means you're going to want to put the 2x plus 5 over here. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So it's going to go up here. In effect, you're writing one is 2x plus 5 over 2x plus 5. That's going to give you x minus 3 minus, and in parentheses, 2x plus 5, all over 2x plus 5, greater than or equal to 0. And now I want to simplify. Well, can you tell x minus a 2x will be a negative x? And negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. 2x plus 5, and I want that greater than or equal to 0. All right, find zeros, top and bottom. Top. Negative x minus 8 equals 0. Negative x equals 8. x is equal to negative 8. You can see it. Negative negative 8 is positive 8 minus 8 is 0. All right, bottom. 2x plus 5 will equal 0. 2x is negative 5. Divide by 2 negative five halves. All right, we're gonna put those on the number line. Negative eight would come to the left and then negative five halves, negative two and a half, negative 3.5. See if you can put your circles on. Negative eight came from the top. There's an or equal to. Closed circle. Closed circle. There's an or equal to. Negative five halves came from the bottom. Always open. It's from the bottom. Again, very technical. Because it's going to determine whether you have brackets on the negative eight, which direction and We'll have parentheses on the negative five halves because you're going to have brackets and parentheses in the answer here. Very technical. Hope you can keep all this straight. All right, let's try this side. Negative nine. You would have, again, you're going to test here. A negative, a negative nine minus eight over two times a negative nine and five. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, yeah, positive nine minus eight, that's a one. Negative 18 add five, negative 13, greater than or equal to zero? No, this is negative. So this side of negative eight, no. All right, between negative eight and eight, two halves, maybe negative seven. A negative, a negative seven minus eight. Two times a negative seven and add five. Greater than or equal to zero. Seven minus eight, you're gonna get a negative one over a negative 14, add five, negative nine. Yep, two negatives is positive. Yes. And on this side is zero. Negative a zero minus eight. Two times zero add five. Greater than or equal to zero. Negative eight over five greater than or equal to zero. No. 
a negative here. Answer. A bracket, negative eight, comma, negative five halves with a parenthesis. Leave a bookmark. Old bookmark with the answers. Three, seven. Twenty-seven. Both on one page. Negative eight, negative five halves, bracket on the left and parentheses on the right. All right. Why don't we try one more with even a little more, with just a little over 30 minutes. Why don't we try one more that's even nastier? Why do they get nasty on you? Uh, how about 29? 352. Take a 2, add a 1 over 1 minus x, less than or equal to 3 over x. Okay, get a zero. Two plus one over one minus X, minus three over X, less than or equal to zero. Get common denominator. All right, see if you can do it with three pieces. Your common denominator is going to be both pieces on bottom, 1 minus x times x. I'm going to put that under each piece. So I'm going to have 2 over 1 minus x, 1 minus x times x. And I'm going to spread it out because you can see I'm going to have to modify the top. 1 over, now I have a 1 minus x, so I'm going to just put an x minus a three and I already have an X. So I'm going to stick a one minus X with the X. And it's less than or equal to zero. Now I got to modify your tops. It's tough to teach this. It, it, it's a lot of jiggering. You just got to imagine how would I go back from this back to this? Well, the one minus X and the X would both cancel. So I need both of them. So I can cancel this with all that, and I'm back with my two. All right, how would I go back and have just a one minus X? I've stuck an X on bottom for common denominator. I'd have to have an X on top, times X on top, so that these X's would cancel, and there's my one over one minus X. And then on this piece, I have an, an X, I'll need the one minus X. So my one minus six would cancel, I'll be left with the three over X. Now that's gonna give me a two, a one minus X with an X, add an X minus three and one minus X, and it's all over one minus X with an X. You can see what a monster this is getting to. It's a matter of simplify your top. Can you distribute from both sides? A two times an X times a one, that'd be a two X. And a two, an X and an X, that'd be a minus two X squared. Add an X, subtract three and add three X. And it's all over. 1 minus x with an x, 0. We just got to keep simplifying it down until we want 
one top and one bottom. Then we'll need zeros of both, put them on the number line and et cetera. All right, looks like I'm gonna get a negative two X squared plus an X. Oops, I lost that plus three X minus three over a one minus X with an X. Well, if I saw that three X, I could have speeded up a little bit, but I didn't. So finally, I, I'm gonna have a negative two X squared add a four X subtract three over a one minus X with an X. All right, I finally have zeros of the top and zeros of the bottom. Yeah, two X plus X is I don't think I've done it right. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is horrible. Glad I've uh, <laughs> caught my mistakes before I uh, looked it up in the end and I mean an idiot. Okay, I think I've done this right. 2x minus 2x squared plus my x minus 3 and my, uh, add 3x. Okay. There's my negative 2x squared. 2x add x is 3x. Oh, that's horrible. Add 3x and minus 3. So I should have a 6x. Now the ultimate proof will be checking the answer in the back. Trying to catch my mistakes as I'm going. Hope I'm okay. All right. Well, this is going to be a bit of a pit. The, the bottom zeros are not bad. Zeros. I'll have x equals zero from this and x equals one. One minus one is zero and just zero itself. You're setting one minus x times x equals zero. So one minus x equals zero. One would equal x, x would equal one. And then this x by itself, x would equal zero. They're gonna be open circles on the number line. Top zeros, bit of a pit. I told you this is a project. Top zeros. You can see both. I'll have negative 2x squared, add 6x minus 3 equals 0. Quadratic formula. Unless you want to bust your brains trying to factor it. More than likely, it probably factors. They like uh, integer answers to these things, but um, we didn't, haven't taught you how to factor that. So I'm gonna have negative six, add and subtract, be square root six squared 36 minus four times a negative two, negative three, and divided by negative four, two times a. Negative six, add and subtract. 36 minus square root of 12. This is going to come out clean at all. Over negative four. Maybe I should, uh, just to see if things are, I got the thing. This, this was 29. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Okay, I think we're going okay. Yeah, it, it's not whole numbers. All right, so that's going to be a negative six, add and subtract. A root 12 is a root four, root three over negative four. And then root four is two, so that's a negative six, add and subtract two root three over four. Pull out a two. Negative three, add and subtract root three all over four. It's a negative, I've lost my negative four. Negative four. And so two into negative four twice, I wind up with negative three, add and subtract root three all over negative two. You're gonna want decimals because there's no way to really know how to put this on the number line. So say first one, negative three, add root three all over negative two. Uh, let's see, put this in parentheses. Should put a whole bunch of these on the test, shouldn't I? 
negative three, add root three, and divide by negative two. Point six three four. Second one, negative three, subtract root three, all over negative two. All I really gotta do is call it back. Went over to the plus, put a minus 2.366. Okay, the book is gonna use these form of the answers at the boundaries, I'll show you that at the end. But uh, we'll use the decimal form. Now, again, I don't have to use the decimal forms to test. I just need to, I just need them to know what order to put the numbers on the number line. Yeah, the first two were zero and one. Open circles, they came from the bottom. 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 Notice the type of circle. Okay, 0 0.634, uh, negative three, add root three, divide by two will be between zero and one. And 2.366 is bigger than one and that's uh, my negative three, root three, divide by negative two. This was divided by negative two. Okay, what kind of circles? I've forgotten. Ah, I have an or equal to. Closed. Closed. Or equal to. Or equal to. All right, we're 45 minutes. I know it's long, but uh, we'll try to get through this. Test. I guess we'll use negative one. All right. We're testing into negative two X squared, add six X minus three, and on bottom a one minus X and an X. And there's no neat factored form for this, but don't let that stop you. You just punch it in and we'll work it out. We only care about the sign at the end. So with X equal negative one, I've got negative two, negative one squared, add six times negative one, subtract three. Bottom one minus negative one and negative one. Make them up less than or equal to zero. Well, you can figure it out the top in your head or you can punch it up here. Negative two parentheses, negative one squared. Add six times negative one, subtract three. Came up at negative 11 over negative two, less than or equal to zero. No. Negative one minus negative one is two, times negative one is negative two, top came up negative 11. You almost see that in your head, negative two, add six, I'm sorry, negative two, subtract six is negative eight, minus three is your negative 11. Both are negative, that's positive. No. We wanted this less than or equal to. Yeah, finally down here, less than or equal to zero. Or yeah, right here, I rewrite right here. All right, X equal now between zero and 0 0.634. I guess we'll use 0.1. So you'll have negative two. Again, don't let these strange numbers throw you. Negative 0.1 squared, six times uh, 0.1. And subtract three, bottom, one minus point one, point one. Uh, less than or equal to zero. Can you tell your bottom is positive? You have a positive here and a positive there. Here you had a positive here 
and a negative there. So your bottom is negative. All right, so your bottom is positive. Top, negative two times 0.1 squared. Add six times 0.1, subtract three. Is negative, negative 2.42. Yes. All right, between 0.634 and one, people will use 0.7. So X equals 0.7, negative two. I don't know if I squeeze it in here. Times 0.7 squared, add six times 0.7, subtract three. One minus 0.7 times 0.7. And can you tell the bottom is positive? You're over a positive. Again, one minus 0.7 is positive, 0.7 is positive. So it all depends on the top. And we want this less than or equal to zero. Uh, negative, oops, 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 okay. Negative two times 0.7 squared. Add six times 0.7. Subtract three, 0.22. Positive, no. Positive or positives, they're not less than or equal to zero. Oh man, we got two more of these to go. <laughs> oh boy, this is a project. Put a bunch of these on the test, huh? Uh, between one and 2.3, so how about two? So X equals two. You'd have uh, negative two times two squared. Six times two, subtract three. Bottom, you'd have one minus two and times two. All right, can you tell your bottom is negative? One minus two is negative one, times two is negative two. Top, negative two times two squared. Add six times two, subtract three, one, positive. Less than or equal to zero, yes. Positive divided by negative. Yes. All right, finally, I guess I'll write the answer on the next page. I'm not gonna have room for it. Finally, above 2.366, let's say X equals three. Negative two times three squared, add six times three minus three, and on bottom one minus three times three, and your bottom is negative. Is it less than or equal to zero? Negative two times three squared, add six times three, subtract three. Negative three. Negative. So you're getting negative three over a negative, less than or equal to zero, no. All right, uh, I'll try to keep the gibberish all on one page. Uh, maybe I'll write it down here so you can see it in. Answer, zero, two. I'll write it negative three add because I'll match the book over negative two. I do a bracket there, parentheses there. Start off with one and that have a parentheses because of the open circle. And it was negative three, subtract root three, divide by two and a bracket. Uh, I'm sorry, divide by negative two. All right, uh, get, you could use the brat if you'd use 0.634 here and uh, 2.366, that's fine. That's fine. Use that. How close? 29, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. Let me copy down the book because they played around with the signs. The book. 
or sorry, parentheses, 0 comma 3 minus root 3 divided by 2. Let's see it here. 3 minus root 3. They, they played around with the signs and then 1 comma 3 add root 3 over 2, parentheses in bracket. And then 1 comma 3 add root 3 divided by 2. I don't know if you can see what they've done. They basically have divided through by this. So negative three divided by, that makes it three over two, change that to a two, and then that would turn positive divided by negative, there is a negative. And over here, they divided by both negatives, that turned everything positive. So yeah, there's, there can be several different ways to write the answer. So I'm getting the mood of the room to put a whole bunch of those on the test. We'll, uh, we'll see. Yeah, they, they can get a bit nasty. Uh, this is the answer to 29 on page 352. All right, well, that's almost an hour Zoom meeting. So uh, convince my bosses I'm earning my money. We'll end this meeting and have the next Zoom meetings on Thursday, one at 12, one at nine. All right, we'll end the meeting.